want to garden in Florida, but you keep hearing that it's really challenging, really hard, really difficult. And maybe you've even tried some gardening and it just has not gone well. Today, what I want to take you through is the four fundamentals of Florida gardening, and they are seasons, sun, soil, and wildlife. When you understand these four fundamentals, you're going to be able to have a much more successful garden, whether you're into growing vegetables, tropical fruits, or you want to bring native wildflowers and native wildlife into your garden, like butterflies, bees, and birds. Because gardening here in Florida is amazing. And by understanding these four fundamental areas, you're going to be able to grow a garden of your dreams. So let's start first with the first fundamental area, and that's going to be the seasons. This is honestly the area that so many people get messed up on first, and it's not your fault. Maybe you just moved to Florida or you're like me and you've grown up most of your life here in Florida, but you keep being taught the seasons the way a northerner would learn them. I feel like I always see this chart where it's like spring is a flower and summer is like a sun with sunglasses on. And then of course, we have the leaves falling for fall and then snowflakes for winter. And you probably got that right there, right? That snowflake thing doesn't sound right now that you think about it because you're in Florida, the one area in the country, no matter how cold the rest is, that yeah, we're not snowing here. It's not happening. Once every blue moon, but super rare. And it's probably one snowflake and we will freak out. Most of the country is a temperate climate. They have what everyone likes to say is they have seasons. And here in Florida, we just have hot and less hot, which is kind of true. But honestly, really what our seasons are is this. It's let's start off with the season that is the most different from anything that Northerners experience. And you may be thinking winter, right? But honestly, winter is a lot like, you know, spring up there or maybe even summer, depending on how far north you get. But summer, summer is honestly the season that is the most different from the rest of the country. Because especially in places like Central Florida and South Florida, we are starting to act like a tropical monsoon area. We get constant deluges of rain every single day. You could set your watch by it. Oh, it's three o'clock, it's time for it to rain. And because it's summer, it's hot and it's humid. And it's just, it just is so gross. <laughs> It's just so, it's gross outside. And while that may feel really overwhelming and already get you feeling like maybe I shouldn't live in Florida to garden, it's actually this monsoon season of summer that allows us to grow so many tropical plants, plumerias to hibiscuses to bananas and papayas, and of course the classic Florida orange. There are so many tropical plants that can work here because we have that monsoon season. And then it's time for fall and fall is there's no leaves falling. Honestly, it's not happening. It's still really hot and it's still really humid. And maybe if you're in Northern Florida, you might have a cold front. And by cold front, I mean, you might hit 60 degrees, but generally I would say we go from the hot and humid of summer to it's, it's warm and humid. And the rain, while it doesn't come every day, it starts to slow down because we're starting to head into our drought season. And yes, we have a drought season, though it still rains more than places like Las Vegas. Actually, while a lot of the country is cooling down, Florida has a hard time cooling down because we have so much water here. And all of that water just kind of is like a big old jacket keeping us nice and soupy and warm. I mean, I'm talking, we've got lakes, we've got canals, we've got springs, we've got the Gulf of Mexico and of course the Atlantic Ocean. And so while the rest of the country is starting to get out scarves and cute little outfits to wear while they drink some pumpkin spice, we're just, you know, we're, we're really warm still. And the biggest thing on our mind is just avoiding hurricanes. But then winter comes and winter, um, well, I grew up in South Florida. So honestly, it was still warm at the beginning of winter. I remember many Christmases still sweating, but in central and northern Florida, you'll actually have some cold days. And Miami in the deep parts of winter may actually hit 60 degrees and everyone will be wearing gloves and mittens and hats and winter coats. It's hilarious if you came from up north, but um, it's cold for us. <laughs> and let's be real, winter is probably the time that you or your parents or your grandparents or your great grandparents said, Florida, that seems like a place I should move to. It's actually a gorgeous time of year. We get beautifully blue skies. And for us, it's actually cool. And there's still tons of gardening you can do in the winter time. We're able to now grow things that would actually work up north during the spring and the summer will now work down here in Florida. You can grow things like classic vegetable crops like your lettuces and your beets. 
and in winter we're still very green. Lots of our native plants are going into bloom during the winter season, providing some of the color that we lost from our tropical plants that really don't like how cold it is. And then we swing back into spring and spring is awesome too until it starts getting a little hot. So spring, depending on whether you're in North Florida or South Florida, South Florida is already heading really back into warm season and most of the state is warm. Northern Florida might actually get some cold snaps at the very beginning of spring, but most of Florida is just warm at this point. And spring can actually be a little bit more challenging because well, it's the end of our drought season and yet it's still raining but some of our plants are going to struggle to access water because the water table has dropped so much in the ground that they just really can't access the water that's two three four five feet deep three but no fear actually during springtime when a lot of plants that you buy from a store may struggle to flower our native plants are blooming like crazy because they often have roots that go feet and feet and feet down so that they can still access the water and as soon as we get that first little drizzle of rain boom you got flowers all over the place maybe you got a handle on the seasons you started planting things at the right time but you're still having problems and that's probably because you didn't understand fundamental number two the sun how many people have told me i was using heat tolerant vegetables why are they still struggling well, that's because our sun is intense. If you look at the map of the United States, I think many people don't recognize how far south, especially central and south Florida are. We are on the edge of the proper tropics. And there's actually no other place in the continental US other than Texas that's even close to being as far south as us. If you came from up north and you just can't wrap your head around what does it mean that the sun's more intense, let me help you out. So many of you have come from New York, you've come from the Midwest, and the most intense sun that you guys see in the height of summer is UV index number nine. But here in Florida, um, our average UV index, yeah, it's nine. I'll say that again. The average is nine, which means during the summer, the sun intensity is significantly higher than what you've experienced before. This is why so many tourists burn in the summer to a level that they have never burned before. You can look at UV indexes from around the world in the tropics and they are comparable to what we see in Central and South Florida and even North Florida. The only relief that you get during the summer from that intensity is because the fact that we have so many storms that we do actually get cloud cover to break up the UV that you're actually experiencing. Which is why so many plants that might have done okay in spring all of a sudden just croak on you, even though it's technically not that much hotter between the end of spring and summer. But the sun intensity, the sun intensity is definitely there. But just like having those monsoon rains and monsoon temperatures, Tropical plants love our intense sun. So if you're considering growing bananas or hibiscuses and plumerias, poncienas and jacaranda, a lot of these plants that grow in the tropics that you would only find in a in-house botanical garden up north, they grow in our yard. And it's due to that heat, humidity, and that intense sun. As we head into fall, the intensity of the sun does come down, but it's only honestly hitting the average sun intensity of summer for up north. When we look at both spring and fall for here in Florida, our UV index averages about nine for both of those seasons versus the summer where we average somewhere around UV index 12. Now the sun intensity does drop down so you can go hang outside without too much sun protection, but honestly, you should probably still have some. The winter months do drop down quite a bit with the UV index, but not as much as anything you're gonna see up north. We're gonna be sitting in something like UV index six over the winter months. Okay, so we've got the seasons down. We've got the sun. What could go wrong now? Well, it's fundamental number three, soil. And this is honestly due to the fact that Florida gets so much rain. A lot of the soil that people are used to buying at the store or seeing in other areas of the country, got a lot of rich organic material in it. But because we have all these monsoon rains and we're basically a ancient coral reef that's dried up, we are just filtering water through the ground so fast. A lot of that organic matter just completely washes out. So the challenge may be is that you're thinking that you can just dig a hole and throw a plant in and that it'll work. And that can be true, especially with one of the easiest plants that I think that you can start with, which is all of our native plants. There are so many native plants that like our sandy soil or swampy soil or beach soil. I mean, honestly, no matter where you live in the state, there's a native plant for you. You can start with plants like firebush or starry ross and weed. If you're looking for giant flowers, try things like scarlet hibiscus or get a southern magnolia. These plants enjoy your sandy soil. And even if you want to go beyond native plants, there are plants that aren't from Florida that actually like our sandy soil, like oranges. 
Yes, oranges did not originate in Florida, but they liked it here so much that we're actually known really well for oranges. You, of course, can work with our sandy soil, but you also have a lot of options if you need to amend the sandy soil so that you can grow vegetables and tropical fruits and other flowers. But of course, we need to get to the fourth fundamental, and that's wildlife. And just like our soil, you can work with it or you can do stuff to work around it. When it comes to wildlife, Florida is an amazing place to bring wildlife into your garden. Florida has been designated it is the world's capital for butterflies. And if you enjoy birds, tons of people flock to Florida just to see migrating birds and some of the tropical birds that are unique to Florida. And that's what's so amazing about gardening here in Florida is you can bring some of this amazing wildlife right into your garden from monarch butterflies to giant swallowtails. And when it comes to bird, everything from ibises over to ruby-throated hummingbirds. Do you think I could get a flamingo in my garden? I'm not talking about the plastic ones. And when it comes to our wildlife, just like up north, we have our seasons when there's a lot of wildlife and a lot of bugs and times where there's a little bit less. One of the big things up north is that winter pushes a lot of things into dormancy, right? They go to sleep just to survive or they head on south so that they can stay warm. But here's the cool thing. So much wildlife actually comes to us during the winter months. So when a lot of people are thinking about animals migrating away. Here in Florida, fall is actually when things are migrating to us. And the spring is kind of the opposite. They migrate away <laughs> at that time of year because they head back north. And when it comes to our bug populations, unlike in winter where up north, when you go outside, there really aren't any bugs around. Here in Florida, we do have bugs all year round. That's why we actually find that a lot of vegetables grow really well in the fall, winter, and spring is because a lot of those bug populations decrease during that time of year. And this is also why we are very challenged to grow things like vegetables in the summertime. But one of the biggest ways that you can avoid having pests in your garden is actually by planting things in the right place at the right time. And the right time is the right season. But when it comes to wildlife in the garden that maybe you don't want, I've heard people talk to me about giant spiders and crazy animals that are coming into the garden. But a lot of stuff that comes into your at-home garden in the suburbs or in urban environments is pretty typical to what people face up in the north. There's a couple of things that are odd and different like fire ants that you don't want to have to deal with. But honestly, there's more good that you can get from our wildlife than bad. And honestly, most wildlife works a lot better with you when you understand those other three building blocks, the seasons, the sun, and that soil. And if you want to go even deeper into understanding how to take these four fundamental building blocks and apply them to vegetables, tropical fruit, wildflowers, butterfly gardens and beyond, go get a copy of my book, A Beginner's Guide to Florida Gardening. It's a quick and easy read that's gonna help you wrap your mind around how to take these four fundamental building blocks and go build a garden of your dreams. You can go pick one up at Amazon or I'll put a link in the description or the comments down below. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.